The Bronx is like, it's, it's a big community, you know what I mean? Like, for outsiders, it's dangerous. It's My, rough if you're not from here, but if you're from here, this is normal. We'll rob you, you know what I'm saying? We'll steal your car, take it to Hunts Point, and then help you buy it back piece by piece, Here because we love you. You know what I'm saying? It's Holla. all love, it's all love, it's for the fam. What up, y'all? We are the Bodega Boys. And we're about to show you how we grew up in the Bronx. That's right. So this is Dewey, you know what I'm saying? Dewey Avenue right off Dewey Piedmont. Dewey Avenue you know off Piedmont. I mean? This was my second crib growing up. It's very important to me and very special to me because it was the first crib I ever had that had grass, it had a yard. That shit was like mind blowing to me, you know what I mean? Yo, know, this shit felt like, like, like Central Park to me when I was a kid, you know what I mean? There's a hose. Let's see the good squirrel running up. I used this to is the, the worst ball. episode of MTV Cribs ever. <laughs> like there's a hose. I used to dig a hole here, you know what I mean? It's so sad. Because I had no toys growing up, so I would just stand here and dig holes in my yard and make my parents mad. I never had like my own green space, you know what I mean, before we came here. Um, and it was, it was, it blew my mind because like growing up in New York City, you do not have personal green spaces. And, but being from the Dominican Republic, like I was summer there and it was like night and day, climbing palm trees and like, and I wanted a, and this was like a piece of that. And I, I feel like it was important for my parents too, you know what I mean? Because they're from a place where everything is green, everything is nature, you know what I mean? So this was like a little bit of that. Here, behind, behind these uh, Rikers Island bars, was the living room, which when my brother was born had to be turned into a bedroom, because there's, there's only two bedrooms in it. So they turned this uh, living room into a half bedroom, half living room. The ceiling is super low, you know what I mean? Like, I could, if I could go in there and probably touch the ceiling with my elbow. There was always like a rotating cast of people living in this house, you know what I mean? Like, all my cousins, people that were kind of related to me, like, what I call Spanish cousins, where it's like, yo, I lived with you for 10 years. Like, we have, there's no blood relation, but I guess we're cousins now. Got the cousins and stuff coming from exactly. the uh, constant flights in, you know what I mean? coming in with the garbage bags full of clothes. Exactly, you know what I mean? Until they get their shit together and then they bounce and then the new family comes in, et cetera, et cetera. But this is crazy, man, like, a lot of good memories. All right, so we saw your spot. Now we're gonna head over to 4687 Park Avenue right. and we're gonna stop by Yankee Stadium over at 161. Let's check it out. Go. We're here on Jerome Avenue, BX all day. We're in the shadow of the new Yankee Stadium. Yeah. We're also across the street from my old home where I grew up as a toddler. Yeah. Uh, there was five of us, I believe. This is my third floor apartment. If you notice now, we have window guards. I don't remember yeah. there being window guards. I remember it being very dangerous. It was just like a pillow and an open window. And my mother was like, yo, if it happens, it happens. There's a lot of you kids. I'm gonna <laughs> replace one of y'all. This is the facade right here. You, it's very You don't know fresh. that word. I, you don't know that. I you know, you just, you just, you, someone said something. that and you just took it. Don't fall for this. You know he's trying to act like he's like coached. He's on Channel 13 and he's on PBS. Shit. He doesn't know that the, the only book Miro has ever read is the manual for NBA 2K15, <laughs> all right? Here's another fun fact. They have intercoms. You don't need an intercom. You just, if you want to get into the building, you go in front of the building and you just yell out hey, like, yo, Jose, yeah, throw down the key, that's mommy, you, that's the intercom. Yeah. let me in, yeah, hey, yo. So this is 4687 yeah. Park Avenue. If you look up right there, this ledge right here, that's our old apartment. Okay. So me and my sister, we would like sit right there. Are those bay windows, fam? This building, my parents bought this back in like 1984. They got it from the city for 13K. So my father was a landlord collecting the rent. We'd come out, have to change the garbage up. And this neighborhood was so bad at the time that the garbage would just, the sanitation wouldn't come around sometimes. So we'd have to push the garbage onto the Metro North tracks to get them to come pick it up. <laughs> I'm not making that up. That's how wild yeah. this is. It was, it was pretty big for a Bronx apartment. But what's cool is the back, you could see the back of this block. The back window looks into that park. KRS-One and Melly Mel and all those people who started hip hop, they used to go there and set up their turntables and party. And you could hear it from in here. This right here was like my backyard. Like you'd come out here and there'd be a million kids out here playing. We'd play baseball in the street. Don't ask me how we were playing baseball or football in the street. You see how much traffic goes back and forth, but we still made it happen. Now I remember we were out here playing wiffle ball and we hit the ball onto the Metro North tracks. And one of them went over there, climbed on the fence, went down on the tracks, got the ball and came back up. And I said to him, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. He said, I'll teach you how to do that next week. We moved out of here on Saturday. <laughs> so you never learned how to climb down the tracks? I mean, I'll learn later. Let's go, let's do it. Let's go. Man. I think home 
is home has memories attached to it. There's yeah. a sentimental value. It's there's definitely you have family there. There's love. The people are not the same people, but they're still the same people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like these, I was this kid. You know what I mean? Playing ball, whatever. And just the sounds, the smells, the people. When you go through struggle with people around you and the community that you're coming up with, that that feels like home. Cause it's like, yo, we came up from this, all of us together. You know what I'm saying? So. Got a little deep on y'all, you know what I'm saying? Deep. Shed a tear to that. Don't be afraid to shed a Bronx tear. <laughs> By the way, a Bronx tear is when you get your face, face cut. cut. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts so much that you just start involuntarily tearing. Ow. <laughs>